we are going to look at how to calculate how much kinetic energy something has and how much potential energy something has because of gravity. So I know last time we were just getting introduced to energy, one of the things I had you do was classify different uh, examples of energy according to their form and according to whether they were examples of kinetic energy or potential energy. We're going to look at kinetic energy and potential energy a little bit more today, and I'll show you how to very simply figure out how much of each an object has. So first, just to go back from last time, energy is how much work something can do. I have two different pictures about energy here. So this one down on the bottom, you should recognize as being maybe an example of nuclear energy. This is a nuclear power plant. And uh, this one right here is a wind turbine, which takes the kinetic energy, the moving energy in wind, and turns it into electrical energy. So one specific type of potential energy that I want to talk about today is gravitational potential energy. Remember that potential energy is stored energy or the energy of an object's position. Gravitational potential energy is specifically stored energy an object has because of where it is and its potential to fall to the Earth because of its gravitational attraction to the Earth. So gravitational potential energy depends on mass, how heavy an object is, gravity, which is going to be the same for everything on Earth, and the height above the Earth that that object is. So, for example, here we have a person on the top of a staircase. The person has more potential energy at the top of the staircase, sorry, than at the bottom. All right. The farther an object is away from the surface of the Earth, the more gravitational potential energy it has. So this person has the most gravitational potential energy on the top of the staircase and the least at the bottom. Just kind of like how this scale on the right here shows you an increase in potential energy as that person climbs up the steps to the top. So based on that, a question, does an egg dropped from the second floor or the third floor of a building have more potential energy? So if we go back to what we thought looked at in the last slide, we said the farther an object is away from the Earth's surface, the more potential energy it has. So the egg is farther away from the Earth's surface on the third floor than the second floor. So it will have more potential energy on the third floor. We can easily figure out how much potential energy an object has if we know three things about it. Its mass, this will be usually written in kilograms. So if you see in any of your practice problems, a number and then kg or kilograms after that, you will know that that's the mass. You will need to know the acceleration of gravity, which is always the same. It is a constant, 9.8 meters per second squared. So in all of our problems, this number, which is uh, symbolized by this letter G, will never change. And then lastly, you will need to know the height in meters. That's the height of the object above the Earth's surface. And so if you know these three quantities, you just multiply them together, and then you are able to figure out the potential energy due to gravity that that object has. So let's do some examples. Here's an example. If your egg 
like um, from that question, dropping it from the second, third floor, has a mass of two kilograms. How much potential energy does it hold at a height of 10 meters above the ground? So first, I'm going to write down the things that we know. We know the mass, 2 kg. Remember, kg was mass. We know the mass. We know the height. It's 10 meters. And like we had mentioned in the previous slide, g, gravity is always the same, 9.8 meters per second squared. So notice, even though the question, the example, didn't have this in there, I'm automatically putting down that g is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared because it will always be that same number. Then I wrote down what am I trying to find. Well, it's asking me how much potential energy. So I'm trying to figure out the potential energy. I write down my equation. It's the same thing as on the previous slide. Potential energy equals mass times acceleration due to gravity due to height. And so then I just take these numbers that I wrote down from the question and plug them in here on the right. 2 kilograms is the mass times 9.8 meters per second squared times 10 meters. And when I do that multiplication, I get 196. And this little j stands for joules. And that is the unit of energy, just like kilograms is the unit for mass and, and meters, m is the unit for height or length, j joules is the unit for energy. So it should be at the end after you write down your number. And that's all there is to it. That's all you need to do to figure out potential energy. And that's the first thing I want to make sure that you can do for today is use this equation on the screen here to do problems just like this example that we've done. Now the second thing I want you to be able to do is a, a similar skill, but with figuring out kinetic energy. So let's remember kinetic energy is the energy of motion. And an object will have more kinetic energy if it's moving faster, it has a greater velocity, or if it's bigger, if it has a bigger mass. So, to my first point, let's look at these two cars and think about which has more kinetic energy, the regular car or the race car. And then deciding the race car has more kinetic energy because it obviously has a much higher velocity. Now, in saying that, I'm assuming that their masses are about equal because like we just talked about, Kinetic energy also depends on mass. If the race car was much lighter than the regular car, well, then it might not be as easy for me to say that the race car has more kinetic energy. What about this question? Which would hurt more, getting hit by a 15-foot wave or a 2-foot wave? Now, the bigger wave would probably hurt more because even though they travel about the same speed, there's much more water in the bigger wave. It's much more massive. And so it's going to run into you with a lot more kinetic energy. And it's that energy being applied to your body that's painful. So here, just like potential energy. Here is how we figure out kinetic energy. All right. Still, if you look at it, there's only three things we're multiplying together. So to figure out the kinetic energy, we take the number 1 half, or 0 0.5, and we multiply it times the mass of whatever object we're talking about. Again, you'll know it. It's the mass because it's in kilograms. And then you're going to multiply it by the square of the velocity, and velocities in meters per second. So whenever the question or problem tells you what the velocity is, you need to take it and square it first, 
multiply it by itself first before you do the rest of the multiplication. So one tip when you're figuring these out, either on paper or on your calculator, square the velocity first, push equals in your calculator, and then multiply it by the mass and by one half. So lastly, let's just do one example where we use this equation to figure out kinetic energy. How about this? It says the bird has a mass of 2 kilograms. It is flying at a speed of 5 meters per second. Find its kinetic, and that should say energy. The bird's just blocking the last part. So again, just like I did for potential energy, what information did this tell me? Well, it said it has a mass of 2 kilograms. So I wrote down m equals 2 kilograms. It says it's flying at 5 meters per second. That's what its speed or velocity is. So I put v equals 5 meters per second. It's saying find its kinetic energy. That's what I don't know. That's what I need to find out. So we're going to use the equation like we talked about on the last uh, slide. Kinetic energy equals 1 half times the mass times the square of the velocity. So here I'm going to plug those numbers in. 1 half times 2 kilograms times 5 meters per second squared. Now just again to remind you, if I'm going and I'm going to put this in my calculator to figure this out, I'm going to put in my calculator 5 meters per second squared or 5 meters per second times 5 meters per second and I'm going to put equals right away. And it's going to give me 25. And then I'll do times 2 times 1 half. And so at the end, I will get 25 J joules. And since this is still energy, kinetic energy, it will have a J joule as its unit at the end. So after these directions here, you should be able to do two things. Calculate how much kinetic energy an object has by using the kinetic energy equation. Kinetic energy equals 1 half times mass times velocity squared. And calculate how much gravitational potential energy ha something has by using the equation potential energy equals mass times gravity, which was 9.8, times height. So now you're ready to go on and to look at the practice problems.